Hey there, Neutron Tech crew. Today's adventure takes us straight into the workshop, where Restore 16 HP works their magic on an absolute relic of a tractor. Check out what we're starting with, an Aseki TX-1210 that's seen way better days. This little workhorse rolled off the assembly line back in the late 70s when Japanese engineers were crafting some seriously solid farming equipment. But time hasn't been kind to this one. First things first, everything's gotta come apart. The crew starts stripping away the exterior pieces one by one. Off comes the front grille, followed by those weathered fenders, the engine hood that's barely hanging on and that sad looking dashboard. Every bracket and bolt gets removed too. Some come out easy, but others fight back after decades of corrosion. Here's where things get serious. Surface prep. This isn't just about making things look pretty, the team tackles both the obvious damage you can see and the sneaky deterioration hiding beneath. They're working with grinders, sanders, wire brushes, and chemical treatments to get down to solid metal. With the body panel sorted out, it's time to get intimate with the Isaki's mechanical guts. The radiator cap comes off, hoses get loosened, and all that old coolant gets drained out. You absolutely cannot skip this part. Trying to work on an engine with coolant still in the system is asking for a mess and potential damage. Things get interesting as they start disconnecting everything that keeps this engine connected to the tractor. Wiring harnesses come undone, fuel lines get detached, and those throttle linkages get freed up. Each connection tells a story. Some come apart easily, while others require careful persuasion. With the engine sitting on its own and the chassis exposed, both get their own thorough inspection. The engine's a sight to behold, and not in a good way. Years of oil leaks and combustion residue have turned it into a grimy, blackened mess that's honestly pretty gross to handle. Off comes the cylinder head, and suddenly you're looking at the heart of this two-cylinder diesel. Without the head in the way, they can really dig into the details. Every rocker arm, push rod, valve spring, and guide gets checked for wear. Some might be salvageable, others definitely need replacement. The oil pan comes off next, and wow, the crud in there looks like archaeological sediment. Years of sitting idle have turned the oil into sludge, mixed with metal particles, dirt, and general nastiness. Let's talk about why all this cleaning matters so much. On the outside, all that hardened grease and grime isn't just ugly, it's hiding important stuff. You can't see casting marks, spot leaks, or even find all the bolts when everything's covered in gunk. Inside the engine, cleanliness is absolutely critical. Those oil passages, coolant channels, and crankcase airways are engineered to exact specifications. Even a little bit of blockage from old sludge or carbon buildup can starve bearings of oil. In a diesel engine like this, where everything runs hotter and under more pressure than a gas engine, that's a recipe for catastrophic failure. The oil circulation system deserves special attention during cleaning. Think of these passages as the engine's circulatory system. They're responsible for getting clean, filtered oil to every moving part that needs it. Any blockage here means something's going to run dry and fail. Here's the bottom line on cleanliness. It's about respecting the original engineering. These compact agricultural engines have incredibly tight tolerances. So cleaning isn't just about making things look nice, it's about making sure every part can do its job exactly as the engineers intended. It's what separates a restoration that lasts from one that fails in a season. Every hour spent cleaning pays dividends in reliability and longevity. Now the focus shifts to the electrical components, specifically that starter motor and alternator. 
These two pieces are absolutely essential. Without a working starter, you're back to hand cranking. Good luck with that on a diesel. The technician breaks out the impact drivers and starts taking apart the starter. Off come the end caps and solenoid bolts, revealing the armature inside. Both units get their outer casings treated with fine abrasive discs to strip away years of corrosion. Not just for looks, corrosion creates resistance and heat in electrical components. After cleaning, everything goes back together with fresh fasteners where needed. Fresh oil is next on the list, and choosing the right stuff matters. You need the correct viscosity and specifications to protect all those freshly clean surfaces and passages. Time to tackle the cooling system and everything around it. That radiator has seen better days. Years of rust, dirt baked on by heat, and mineral deposits from evaporated coolant have turned what should be efficient cooling fins into crusty, useless metal. Enter the angle grinder with wire cup wheels. These tools are perfect for restoration work because they can blast through layers of rust and old paint without destroying the metal underneath. Working on the radiator requires a delicate touch. You want to remove the crud without damaging those thin cooling fins that actually do the work. Why go to all this trouble? A clean radiator is the difference between an engine that runs cool all day and one that overheats in the field. Plus, any rust left behind becomes a starting point for more corrosion, especially when you've got different metals in contact with coolant, creating an electrical reaction that eats away at everything. The transmission, housing, and gearbox are up next, and these components are absolutely crucial. They're what takes all that engine power and turns it into useful work, whether that's pulling implements, driving wheels, or powering attachments through the PTO. This type of transmission is typical of compact tractors from manufacturers throughout Asia during this era. Companies making similar units for rural markets understood that farmers needed simple, robust drivetrains they could fix themselves without specialized tools or training. Cracking open the gearbox reveals a mechanical symphony. Input shafts, lay shafts, output shafts, selector forks, and all those precisely machined gear teeth. Using cordless impacts and extensions, they carefully remove corroded bolts without damaging the aluminum housing threads. Taking everything apart serves multiple purposes beyond just checking for damage. All that caked on dirt isn't just ugly, it prevents proper cooling hides potential cracks or leaks, and can mask serious problems. Only by disassembling can you see scored surfaces. There's another consideration for gearboxes that have sat unused or operated in less than ideal conditions. Dirt loves to hide problems like hairline cracks, missing bolts, worn detents, or corrosion around seals. Those narrow oil passages that keep gears cool under load are especially prone to getting plugged up with debris. The team uses small brushes, picks, and compressed air to clear every passage. Remember, gearboxes take incredible abuse during normal operation. Even tiny imperfections can create gear whine at best or complete failure at worst. Clean components also seal better when reassembled, eliminating those annoying oil weeps that seem to plague old equipment. Every surface that meets another surface needs to be perfectly clean and true. Fresh paint isn't just about looks, it's armor against future rust and oxidation. But before any paint goes on, every surface gets properly prepped with primer, designed for agricultural equipment. Understanding the history behind these gearboxes helps explain why reassembly demands such care. Japanese manufacturers in this era deliberately engineered these tractors for field maintenance. A farmer with basic tools could tear down the transmission, 
swap out worn parts, and get back to work without losing the whole season. This wasn't just smart engineering. It was designed around the reality that in agricultural communities, a broken tractor could mean the difference between profit and loss. The reassembly process respects this original philosophy. Every component depends on precise physical relationships with its neighbors. Metal meets metal, power transfers through meshing teeth, and motion happens through pure mechanical advantage. There's zero tolerance for sloppiness in this system. Each bolt gets torqued to specification, each shim gets placed exactly where it needs to be, and each adjustment gets dialed in perfectly. These vintage machines are refreshingly honest compared to modern tractors full of electronics and sensors. What you build is exactly what you get. No computer compensation, no automatic adjustments, just pure mechanical function. If something's wrong, the tractor will let you know immediately and definitively. That grinding noise, gears not meshing properly. That vibration, something's out of balance. That oil leak, a seal isn't seated correctly. This mechanical honesty extends throughout the entire tractor during final assembly. The crankshaft needs perfect alignment in its bearings, with journals polished smooth to maintain that crucial oil film. One misplaced shim or misaligned pin can throw everything off. Maybe the tractor runs poorly, or maybe it doesn't run at all. This demand for perfection shapes how restorers approach their work. There's a specific sequence, an unspoken order to how parts must come together. You learn this sequence through experience, through making mistakes, and through understanding why things go together in a certain order. Take gear synchronizers. They need to be test fitted and rotated to confirm smooth meshing before final assembly. Shift forks require testing in place to ensure they center properly and have the right throw. This hands-on feedback is what makes restoration both challenging and satisfying. You need mechanical intuition, sensitive fingers, and the discipline to do things right, even when nobody's watching. Anyone rebuilding a tractor like this works without safety nets. Each system, drivetrain, PTO, steering, brakes, needs individual testing and adjustment before moving on. There's no diagnostic computer to tell you what's wrong. You figure it out through observation, experience, and sometimes a bit of creative problem solving. That weird noise during testing? Time to investigate. That unexpected resistance when turning? Something's binding. Yet this dependence on pure mechanical function is exactly what makes vintage tractor restoration so rewarding. The moment of reassembly is when scattered parts become a living machine again. Surfaces mate together, systems integrate, and suddenly you have more than the sum of parts, you have a functioning vehicle ready for work. Cylinders find their compression, rocker arms dance in perfect time, Gears mesh smoothly without complaint. What emerges isn't just transportation or a tool. It's proof that good engineering transcends time. When you respect tolerances, clean thoroughly, and work with intention, these machines reward you with decades more service. They come back to life not in spite of their age, but because their fundamental design welcomes restoration. Their mechanical simplicity becomes their greatest strength, creating a direct connection between operator and machine that modern equipment can't match. There's something deeply satisfying about bringing one of these old workhorses back to life, knowing it'll serve another generation just as faithfully as it served the last.